You guys good? We'll just fire up. So, well, thank you for being here today. Appreciate uh, the opportunity to speak a little bit about uh, what happened here today on the floor with the uh, capital investment bill that came up. Uh, we were very encouraged that maybe we could reach some bipartisan agreement. We've been making uh, the case since uh, it's been over a month since we were here last, uh, Karin and I, Senator Housley, uh, talking about the need for tax relief and uh, this capital investment bill. It's a real win-win for Minnesota, especially when we're sitting on a $17.5 billion surplus. Instead of taking out on the credit card, we can be doing some real tax relief, tying those together. Uh, this is an important thing. Uh, so uh, we tried to do that today. We, we had a few amendments that dealt with Social Security tax to help out our seniors and vulnerable folks in Minnesota. Uh, we were hoping for some bipartisan support. You saw earlier there was a movement towards that, and we were really encouraged. Senator Miller made the motion to, to continue, or, or I'm sorry, Senator Nelson made the motion to continue that. Uh, however, party line vote, and the Democrats knocked that down again. Uh, and Social Security was not part of the package. And as we promised, uh, we would not support a bonding bill without some Social Security relief, without tax relief for our seniors, for Minnesotans in general. Um, with that, I want to turn it over to Senator Housley uh, for some comments as well. Thank you, Senator Johnson. Uh, this wasn't a surprise. We've been saying this all session long that Minnesotans want some tax relief, uh, especially our seniors. I've been advocating for our seniors for the last six years, and they, they can't afford their lives right now. Uh, uh, hope and encouragement doesn't pay their bills. They're here every single day at the, at the Capitol. They want Social Security exemption, and we said that from the get-go, and we were not going to pass a bonding bill until we make sure that our seniors get that. So this wasn't a surprise, um, and we are open. We're definitely open to working with the Senate Democrats and the House Democrats and Governor Walls in getting a bonding bill done, because we want to. There are important projects in there. We want to get them done. But when you have an unprecedented $18 billion surplus to put another $2 billion on the credit card before you get any tax relief back to Minnesotans is just wrong. So we're standing strong, making sure that Minnesotans will get some tax relief. Thanks. When you're talking about Social Security tax relief, I could take it that doesn't, wouldn't involve the governor's plan, which calls for, for you know, partial limits on economic limits on the tax relief. So what we're calling for is, is tax relief on Social Security, the full elimination of Social Security taxation. Would your uh, members be willing to vote for an all-cash all uh, infrastructure bill? As you saw today on the floor, we made that motion uh, to do that uh, as a way of ensuring that at least, you know, with this budget surplus, is an opportunity to at least not saddle our future generations with uh, debt service expense. So it is another approach that we are willing to take. Because the bill could come up again later, do you expect the size of it to grow then? Because there are still projects that haven't been you know, submitted. So right now it's close to $2 billion. Could you imagine, if you get what you want in taxes, that it could be a 2 and a half or a $3 billion bonding bill? Would you like to take that? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know what? That number was already bigger than what we already wanted to borrow. We were okay with $1.1 billion, and then it just kept growing and growing. So again, that's something we'd have to go back to the members of our caucus, and what are you comfortable with? And then prioritizing the projects. What do we really need right now? For those folks in and Andover who have contaminated water, they've been getting bottled water delivered for a year and a half, that's urgent. So making sure that we prioritize urgent projects over those that we just want or just hope to get. So we will we'll take those urgent projects and put those at the forefront and then see where that number ends up. So you talked on the floor about sort of a lobbying campaign with mayors. Um, can you just tell us more about that? What, did they call certain mayors or a bunch of them, or what, what was that like? Was it, were you getting pressure from those mayors? Um, yes, yeah, so we, we found out um, that the majority was calling, uh, majority and their staff was calling the mayors in each of Republican members' districts and saying that call your senator because your senator is going to vote against the bonding bill therefore your projects will be in jeopardy if we have to go to an all-cash bill so got all of these mayors across the state who actually get along with their senators and trust their senators to represent them who the senators have been speaking to them all, this whole time in session telling them exactly what's happening and they want tax relief uh, senator farnsworth just told us this morning by the way that 
Senator Pappas called his mayor in the hospital. So that that was kind of unfortunate. And and you don't really go into other people's districts. We've never done that before. But the mayors understand that, yeah, we get it. We, we want tax relief, too. They're hearing that up on the Iron Range. So for Senator Hochschild to, to not bring that up and not vote to uh, bring the SF-15 um, and suspend the rules to bring that up, to really get what they campaigned on, which was tax relief. So yeah, there was a whole campaign to, to go after, um, I would say, more than a dozen of our mayors were, were contacted. And if I could speak to that as well, too. It really shows the extraordinary lengths the majority will go to right now to avoid tax relief for Minnesotans. Mm -hmm. They bypass the elected officials and go to the communities that we represent and try to uh, gin up uh, some, uh, some sort of angst against their elected representatives. I mean, to me, that's a pretty desperate uh, attempt to try to get us to vote against uh, you know, the bonding bill or to vote for the bonding bill. But you know, that is, instead of coming and talking to me, instead of saying, Mark, hey, how can we get this across the finish line? We're willing to negotiate. They aren't even willing to negotiate on this. So uh, you know, to me, this is something that we really need to take a, a step back from we need to get in the room. We need to negotiate this. We've told them from the get, from the very get-go, that this is a win-win bill. Let's get down, and we'll get this done. How transparent is this going to be going forward in terms of the counteroffers back and forth, and letting us know what you're going to get in exchange for bonding bill? Yeah. Well, I mean, we've made it very clear what we want, right? So if you see that come down the pipe, if you see tax relief for Minnesotans, that's what we want to see. So that's it should be very transparent. What you see uh, at the end of the day uh, should be tax relief and a bonding bill. You say tra tax relief, but are you talking specifically about eliminating the Social Security tax? There are a number of options out there. Right now, you saw today it was Social Security tax that we brought up. But yes, I mean, we've, uh, we want tax relief for Minnesotans. That's the bottom line. It sounds like the uh, Social Security elimination, it sounds like that's the holy grail. I mean, are you willing to compromise on that, on the complete elimination at all? Was that up for negotiation at all? Well, they haven't uh, negotiated at all with us. So, uh, you know, we'll see when those talks begin, uh, if they're even willing to talk to us and, or if they're going to bypass us and try again to go back to our communities and districts uh, instead of negotiating with uh, senators who were elected to represent them. Johnson, you said you'd like an all-cash bill. Senator Huzzle, you said that would be a failure to go to all-cash. Is that a divide in the caucus right now between whether to bond or not? I, I'll speak to that. Sure. Um, I would prefer to get a bonding bill done the way it's supposed to be done, but if we have to go to an all-cash bill, again, they're threatening to go to an all-cash bill and don't need our votes, but if we can get our projects done in the all-cash bill, absolutely, let's do one-time spending and get it done. Senator Pappas today said sort of like, if it's an all-cash bill, I don't know that all the projects will be as balanced between Republican districts and Democratic sure. districts. You know, they've kind of made that threat before. Can you just respond to that notion that if they go to an all-cash bill, maybe there are some districts that have projects in this one that won't make it? it I've, isn't it extraordinary that we're getting threatened on the floor right now, that they're going to strip our projects out because we want tax relief for Minnesota? I mean, people should be paying attention to that threat. We want both. We want a bonding bill and we want tax relief. What's so hard about doing that? So the idea that they're going to threaten us and take that all out and do a completely partisan bill, uh, I, I, I mean, I, I hope that they are comfortable voting for that because, quite frankly, I don't think Minnesotans uh, would like to see that happen. Are we going to see uh, action this year, do you think, on making the Med Council an elected body? Yeah, you're getting a little bit of field here now. Uh, we'll, we'll touch back on that later. Thank you. What are you hearing from uh, Democrats about the tax bill? Are, are you having any conversations with them about uh, Social Security taxes? Yeah, so that's something that, that I've approached uh, uh, Senator Dietzik uh, several times about, um, and we've had some discussions regarding that. Uh, of course, situations have changed for her uh, at the present time. So I'm hoping once she uh, is feeling up to it, we can begin those uh, discussions again. Uh, and, and I hope for a quick and speedy healing of, of her situation there as well. Do you want commitment that any of these changes will pass the House too, or you want them to pass the House too, right? Or, or is the Senate passing tax cuts enough for you to cut up your bonding votes? Um, 
Do you want to talk about that a little oh, bit? Oh, no, I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. Um, is, as part of, you know, in order for Republicans to put up I'm the sorry, bonding votes, do you want tax changes to pass the House too, committed to pass the House too, or is it just getting it out of the Senate is enough? Like, if the Senate caucus will agree, Democrats. The Senate caucus will agree with the House, you're saying? I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> well, I guess I'm have, um, Do you need both chambers to sign on to tax changes in oh, order to yeah, feel yeah, okay. Okay. confident putting your both up? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this has to be yeah. real tax relief. We can't just give lip service to this. So right. it's, it's got to be real. We need to see that passing. So. Are there projects in your districts that are kind of getting more deteriorated since 2020? Yeah. I mean, that, they're absolutely, we have needs in our districts. You heard Senator Pappas talk about those. Senator Housley has done a good job of articulating the needs across Minnesota. Uh, this needs to get done. We saw the letters of support from the trades uh, for this bonding bill. We are right there with them uh, on getting this bonding bill done. That's the bottom line. And what we're saying is, why can't we bring these two together and give Minnesotans exactly what they want? On another topic, any thoughts on the governor's revised budget? He increased public safety funding. Is that something you support? Well, we've been tied up here for a little bit. I haven't <laughs> had a chance to see that. But, yeah, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get back to you on that. Senator, if you were a, a, a betting man, would you bet that you eventually get this deal done with uh, both parts that you want? <laughs> Should we talk Sport, sports betting? Sports betting, yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, I certainly hope. I, I think the, the odds should be good that we get something done for Minnesota. If Democrats are truly concerned about the needs of Minnesotans, this is something that needs to get done. And it's what Minnesota wants. They want both the bonding bill and tax relief. So uh, we're on the side of Minnesotans. Get them both done. So we need each other to take us on the odds. <laughs> Look at the boards, yeah. <laughs> um, in your tax package, is there, are there any proposals that you are prioritizing in terms of tax relief? I know you have Social Security. Is there anything else that you want to see right away? I mean, that's you saw our plan that we, we initially put out. Um, I think that's a, a great package. Uh, but you know, when we get into the negotiations, and hopefully uh, shortly here, we can have uh, some prioritization of, of where we want to go within that uh, with the Democrats. Do you have this discussion and debate out the gather they feel it would benefit them. Do you sure. feel it benefits you to have that debate out in public? Yeah, I certainly, uh, I certainly think this is a great uh, opportunity to show Minnesotans where our priorities are. You saw the vote on Social Security that Republicans voted 100% uh, for. You know, of course, Senator Westrom is out uh, with some injuries right now. But, um, you know, we are 100% behind that. And I think Minnesotans saw that Republicans are the ones that are out there fighting for them in tax relief. So uh, I think this was a great debate and helped uh, the Senate Republicans look like we're the grown-ups in the room and trying to move this thing forward. Again, I, I keep getting, uh, ever since we voted that today, voted it down, and fighting for Minnesotans and tax relief, my emails are blowing up because they're like, thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you, we've been asking for this. So, so again, it's, it's what Minnesotans are asking for, and, and we're just standing up for them. All right. Thank well, you. thank you, everybody. Appreciate you coming out.